plants. I've got eggplant sliced pretty thin, but not real thin. And I put salt and pepper on it. And I don't know if you can see that. It's got, it's sweated. So it drew up all the moisture. Then we have a breadcrumb flour mixture. I use onion powder, bay seasoning, um, salt, pepper, um, garlic, onion, oregano. And then we have our egg. And on the stove, we are going to turn on our olive oil in the cast iron pan. And bring this down here and I'll show you what I do. <clears throat> I'll put the egg here so y'all can see it. All right. So I take one of these and I dip it first in the breadcrumbs and flour. I take it out. I always like a clean finger, so <laughs> I dip it in the egg, both sides, and I go back to, let it drip, I go back to the flour and breadcrumbs. That's where I pat it off, flip it, pat it there again, and now you have yourself a nice dipped eggplant patty. So we'll do it again. Into the egg. Back into the bread crumbs and or flour. I can't find my breadcrumbs. I had a little bit left, so I'm using panko and flour. <clears throat> I wouldn't suggest that. I would use flour and breadcrumbs. So I'm gonna see how these end up turning out. I swear I have more breadcrumbs somewhere. I just have no idea where I put them and I wanna get this started. You can use just flour. All right, so we're gonna get these guys breaded and I will be back to show you the next okay. step. I'm one of those people who does not stand over a stove. I do not stand over my cooking um, unless I have to. So I have a few of these done. The oil's hot. You want to start seeing bubbles. And then what you want to do is you want to turn that down. The reason for turning it down is because what happens when you go, when you put your stuff in there, those breadcrumbs, some of them do fall off. And then it starts burning on the bottom. You want to be able to use this oil through your entire um, frying process. Okay, so I keep, I have a flat stop top stove, we do, and I start it off around 6, and then I put it down to about 2.6, and I may even turn it down a little bit from there. I may even turn it back up to 3. We don't know. So anyways, um, while those are frying, I will be doing up the rest of these um, because I cannot sit there and watch things happen. So I will keep an eye on it. I will flip them over because I'm not doing both sides at the same time. So what I do is I lay them in with a fork. <laughs> and no, I don't have one of those splatter screens or anything. I should. I definitely should. But also because I started off doing the bigger ones um, first, I wanted to get these going. All right, so as you can see, those are, those are dry on top. I did not fill my oil the whole way over. So they're going to do on one side and then the other side. The reason for that being is because I do not like tough skin. These are gonna be in here longer for the skin. So the skin, both times are gonna be frying. Nobody wants a tough eggplant skin. All right, so then I'm gonna let these go for a little while. It's a messy stove. It's um, 452 and 
when I flip these over, we'll see what time it is so we can see how long it is. Because I don't make rules when I cook, nor do I follow directions. So I figured while I do this, I should probably show you guys how I do have a little bit more success with things. Um, <clears throat> when you put on your anything that you are putting in flour and breadcrumbs or one or the other, you want to give it a nice little push. And when you stick it in your egg, on both sides, you also too want to give it, get it right in there. Take it, whether you use your fork or your fingers and pat it. Turn it to the side, shake it off, pat it again. So now when you knock everything off, it, that's not gonna fall off and go anywhere. It's nice and coated. So it's not gonna fall off in your frying process. Not great. <laughs> okay, so it's 4.58. So I'll put the time on how long that took on one side. Now it's 4.58 and we'll do the other side. All right, so because we're gonna be put, placing these in the oven to make eggplant parmesan, normally if you were to serve these, you would lay a paper towel down on like a cookie sheet or a platter or something and put a paper towel down, let the paper towel soak up the grease. But because I'm not gonna do that, I'm gonna take these right from the pan and put them over to the baking pan. Now these are nice and nice and tender. Your fork should go right in. So you put it, lift it towards the skin. So when you poke, you'll be lifting it from the skin. But far enough in so if your skin tears, you're not plopping it back into your oil and making a big splattery mess. So another thing is, is that Bigfoot was telling me um, that some of y'all are kind of interested on how I dropped my phone. <laughs> some of y'all are kind of interested on how I crack eggs. So I thought just for the fun of it, we could be and I need another one. I'll try to do it as slow as I can, but I'll go get an egg and crack an egg for you. <laughs> so I'll try to go slow. I mean, I don't know. So I just either do it here or do it on a bowl. And I take it like this. So I've got a finger here, my thumb here, my other three here. And when I flip it over, I have it on the meat of my thumb and I just use my finger to you know crack it so like that so what I do is I just take my thumb and I go work backwards with these fingers so I'm working this way with my thumb this way these fingers and I'm holding it in place so crack boom <laughs> So this is the motion that I'm doing. That's it. So I'm just separating the two. So I'm using my hand kind of like a, just open it up. I don't, I don't know, I just do stuff. Okay, let's get back to this. I always use more flour than breadcrumbs. Um, but I thought, you know, once you get your flour and breadcrumbs up there, um, so I just do a little bit of salt, not a lot because I salt these babies when they're done. And I do, I use cracked pepper. I don't use the powdered stuff if, I use the powdered stuff after cooking, not during cooking, unless something calls for it. And I don't measure out stuff, so I just do onion powder, garlic and 
need to get my bay seasoning back out. You can use chili powder or paprika or whatever it is you want to do. Again, I just, I just do stuff. So and then I just kind of bring it on through because I needed both more egg. This was a big eggplant. I needed more egg. Jeez, I'm going to be wiping down everything. I needed more egg and I needed more, uh, more of the, more of the breading stuff. Yep. And meanwhile, here I am not having my next round going. So I need to put in my next round of eggplants. It's sweatshirt weather today. Okay. So yeah, I just wanted to kind of show you how I do with this. It's nothing fancy. However you want to bread them for taste is up to you. Dip it in the egg. It's just a process. Back over to this. I'm gonna get these fried up and finally we'll get them all in the pan and I'll show you what I do. I went downstairs and got me a marinara and already opened it for me. I prefer marinara. Okay. <laughs> so the last thing of eggplant is frying up and what I did is I took you may only have one layer and that's okay or you can use a smaller pan and do a double layer or a triple layer or you can do a quadruple right, layer if you want but looking pretty good so we're going to get the last ones out and into the pan. Some of these are thicker and thinner, so they all kind of go at different um, different times. So we're going to get the thinner ones out. If you don't have enough to cover, you can either spread them out or just leave it alone. It's fine. Doesn't need to be perfect good enough okay so <clears throat> now you can do your parmesan on top too um, because of the taste I put a little layer on here like this you don't have to do that you can wait to put it over top of the sauce or even over top of your cheese and then I'm not going to use a lot of sauce. I can open another can or jar, but I'm just going to, I don't use a lot of sauce. You can use it and smother it if you want. I particularly do not. And then over here I have mozzarella, the Mexican five cheese and a cheddar because that's what I had open, so I cut the bags, and that's what I'm doing. You can just use mozz. That's fine. You can just use mozzarella, that's absolutely fine. Mozzarella is one of those cheeses that <laughs> kind of bunches up together. I didn't want to open up a new bag, so I'm just using a bunch of different kinds of cheeses. That's not easy with one hand, let me tell you. All right, let's get this on there, and then we'll go back and do the clumps. And yeah, I'm one of those cooks who gets my hands right in there. Everything goes in the oven. My hands are washed, it's fine. If you don't like it, cook it yourself, that's my motto. All right, one more bag. I'm putting this on top just because it's more colorful. This would be the point where you would turn off your cast iron pan. <laughs> 
and also already have your oven preheated. But because I'm preoccupied, I don't do these things. But yeah, you would definitely want that done beforehand. And then we go through and do the Parmesan on top. I'm going to have to open another one, but not now. Go through and spread out your chest. And this is where your preference of spices would go on, but I'm going to use some... I'm not going to do fresh parsley. I'm not going to do fresh anything in this one. Um, I may do some basil leaves, um, but you don't have to. So your basil, your oregano, um, your thyme, whatever, whatever you want to do. You can put a little bit of breadcrumbs on top if you want. But anyway, um... I will lightly put some paprika on there and then be done. And when it's done in the oven, I'll show you what it looks like. Side note, I forgot to put on my rubber handle. And this sucker's really, really heavy. Um, always remove that from the heat afterwards. Otherwise, it just keeps on cooking. Um, your cast iron pan holds a lot of heat for a long, long time. And so does your burner. So allow the burner to clean up so you can or cool down so you can clean up. But these uh, rubber grabbers are really handy. I got a mess in the, uh, <clears throat> in the sink. <laughs> All right, so let's get this out of the oven. Oof. Two hands, people, two hands. Ah, oh, look at that. That looks so good, so good. So I don't like things to stick on the pan. That's another reason, excuse my hand. That's another reason I um, did not pat these off with um, the oil off or anything like that. That way they lift really, really easy. <clears throat> Normally, I also um, take and uh, let this sit a little while but I wanted to get this going and Bigfoot's out there chit-chatting with a, with a friend about Israel right now and things that are going on there. But I wanted to get this out of the pan and show you guys. I The first time I ever made this for Bigfoot years and years and years ago, I tried passing this off as meat, he told me. I told them, him it was like meat. It's not meat. <laughs> it's like meat. So let's get a fork, wherever that may be. All right, I gotta go grab a fork. I have no idea what's going on with my tripod thingy, but it was being quite silly. Okay, check it out. It's still crispy, you hear it? Still crispy. And the skin, what's important to this is that your skin is not tough. But, mmm. You hear that crunch? This is really, really hot. I should let, I'm gonna let this cool down. But the cheese, the scum de deliciousness. And that eggplant is scrimmed at Eliotius. It's so good. <laughs> yep, it's good. <laughs> all right, that's it. I hope y'all have a blessed night. God bless you all in Jesus' name. And um, get cooking. Don't forget to prep the stuff back that you need to cook for you and your family. And this eggplant came out of, out of our garden. So um, it was by far the biggest and the 11th eggplant that we got from our garden. 
and there's more going. So I'm just praying and hoping that the weather holds off a little bit so we're able to get a little bit more out of our garden. It is mid-October and we're still producing. That's something for us because I'm gonna say this quietly, but it's not out of the realm to actually have snow, the big S word, by the 31st or sooner or a day or two after. But this time, I hope it holds off till like December. <laughs> All right. Good night.